The 10 minute drill. This is a big one. Covered by Universal Roof and Contracting. The difference is universal. On 1010XL. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hit it. Yeah, it's a blood feud right now. Um, Guggen's against Guggen's. It's like the. Uncivil War right Hatfields now. Hatfields and McCoys. Yeah, after the Hatfields right and McCoys are getting after the text line, by the way, for the most part, is a 100% on, on board with a whether or not uh, demanding that their vote count. They're not on Twitter. I think there's some very vocal anti-whether or not people that are hammering my quickie poll right now. Yeah, I don't I don't understand how you could be so vocally anti-whether or not. But, I mean, um, it's, quite simply, I said quickie poll, do you want a round of weather or not today? Yeah. Uh, right now with 34 votes in, just 12 minutes left in the quickie poll, uh, oh, God, no, leads hell yes, 56 to 44. Percent? Correct. Yeah, so what is that total vote, so four or five? There's 34 votes. Yeah, so it's like what? Like yeah. 20 to 14 or something? Something like that. Well, there you go, gang. Uh, I will. I, I'm going to abide. By the polls of justice. I mean, so, if we get to the end of the ten minute drill here. Now, I, I don't know if I, 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 I could. We could. Add, I mean, I've got about seven yeses yeah, and two yeah. no's on the, on the text line. If That's we fair. balance them in there, it does. Oh, oh, we're making a run now. It doesn't matter to me, gang. Honestly, I. Well, we're not making a run. Oh well, there you go. The Good quick, things are happening. Quickie. By the way, uh, someone on the text line, what's whether or not? To which I answered blasphemy. To which point he responded, whether or not to sedate Dan and shave his head while he's passed out. That's a game of whether or not I would play. And All right. They, We're now 41 votes in, and whether or not it has pulled a hand. Oh, well, there you go. There Look you at go. that. So, Power of the people. Again, I I will I will honor the vote. Democracy okay? in action. Yeah. You're not going to have to, you know, um, exterminate me and to get me out of here. You're not going to spray anything. We will we will adhere on this to to the voting public. A Super Tuesday. <laughs> it is a Super Tuesday. Finally, uh, and Hicks not here. Of course, he would be a real downer to this whole campaign right now too. So. Uh, there's that. Uh, meanwhile, uh, there are headlines from the sports world. And there are we, a few things going on. We package them up in the 10-minute drill, so without further ado. Uh, yeah, well, obviously, like the, the lead story right now is the uh, safety protocols that the league has put in place. And also, uh, at least for 2020, uh, RIP to the preseason. Obviously, it's just for this year, but uh, do you wonder if that'll sort of be maybe a, a spearhead towards – uh, further talk of reducing or possibly eliminating those games you in know, the future. The pandemic has uh, struck my my memory banks a little bit, but hadn't the NFL already agreed to a 17-game schedule and only three preseason games? Aren't we headed for that anyway? I think we're headed in that direction. I don't know if we're officially there yet, so I wouldn't be surprised, though, um, if the three is knocked down to at most two. I don't think that we're ever going to completely give up the preseason games. I do think they have some value. You can survive without them, and yeah, it's not front-line value, but, I mean, there have been Jaguars who would not have had good careers if it weren't for the preseason. Paul Spicer made this team based on sacking guys in the third and fourth quarter of preseason games, and then Spice went on to be a very good, valuable player here. And he would not have made this team, I don't believe, I've been told this by people on that staff back in the day, I don't believe he would have made this football team if it weren't for the preseason. Would Keelan Cole be on this team right now? And some of you say, well, anyway, that's a different story. But would Keelan Cole be on this team if the Jaguars didn't have a preseason? Right? He caught that big, long touchdown at, what, New England maybe, was it? So, you know, there's opportunity there. The players' union, I think, is le- – I, I, I don't know. It might be short-sighted to say you don't want any preseason. This year's different. There's a virus going around, and – if you can delay having to, you know, get face to face with with people um, other than your teammates for as long as you can, then then you should. But I, I think it's also important to note because, it, in fairness, I mean, the NFL players' tweets on Sunday made it look as if the NFL owners were just clueless, and the NFL was clueless when it came to coming up with a plan. Obviously, a plan had been in the formation because you don't come out with all of these, you know. Um, counter offers or suggestions or potential rules. You don't come up with all that and, you know, with a six hour meeting on Sunday afternoon. So um, look, it's encouraging because it seems to be agreed upon by the players. And if we learn anything through baseball is you got to get the owners and the players on the same page, or you could be surprised by how long it takes. Meanwhile, down in the bubble, the uh, NBA released yesterday that, uh, zero positive tests among the 346 players tested 
inside the NBA bubble. Once cleared to enter the bubble, no positive tests have popped up inside the bubble. So uh, now just nine days away from actual games getting underway, Jeff, is the bubble works. It's bubbles working in the NBA. The bu- only two uh, in the bubble of the NHL, and they've got, what, 20 teams there, too, or 16, whatever it is. And um, uh, it, MLS tested like 1,000 without a positive test. So, yeah, the bubble leagues work, and you hope that that also there's an indication that, you know, societally the uh, the rate of infection will start to go down, and, you know, we'll see. I, I, unfortunately, it, you can't do a bubble for football. Too much personnel. I mean, you got a 65-man roster, 60-man roster in the NFL. Eh, you know, to take a, a traveling part in the NFL will be 100 people. Can you put 3,200 people up in one bubble? And Probably that's, not. That's a big bubble, man. Yeah. I think you're going to have to go more. MLB's not in a bubble, right? They never were, were they? No, each team's in their own site. Yeah, each team's in their own site, and that's how NFL would go. And look. Like Major League Baseball, NFL is going to have positive tests. The idea is just to curtail them as best you can, and and I think baseball is probably where we should look more than NBA. Like, right? If we're if we're trying to compare the NFL and and how it's going to be affected, then we probably need to look at a league that's handling it similarly to the NFL, not one that's in a bubble. So, you know, really, it's encouraging for basketball. And I know that was your question; it didn't have anything to do with football. But as we apply it to our Jaguars. It's probably best to notice what's happening in Major League Baseball. That's a better indication of some of the roadblocks that the NFL is going to run into. Uh, speaking of uh, roadblocks, the uh, SWAC, granted, it's, it's a small league, but uh, they're the latest small league to postpone their fall sports. The SWAC announcing that they're uh, dropping fall sports for 2020 and are going to push football to the spring. Uh, do you feel like more of these small leagues might go that route? Well, what the Ivy League is already talking about playing in the fall. I think that 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 leagues and teams, it has to be leagues. I guess right. if individual schools go ahead and play in the fall, then you know there goes your your idea. But I do think that you know it'll be kind of a fallback. I, I don't know if it's a great idea though. I mean, it's great for the kids to get to play, but a lot of these small schools stay in business by playing one or two games against the powerhouses. Well, this just in: the powerhouses don't play in 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 the spring. And football is going to become more expensive in the spring than it would have been in the fall. And can you, based on all the other athletic budget, um, you know, effects of this pandemic, can you know, can you afford to play in the spring? Uh, some leagues are saying they'll they will. We'll see. Uh, yesterday, not a repeat from September twenty second, but Antonio Brown seemingly on social media implied he's uh, he's once again done with the NFL. Uh, he, there was constant flirtation throughout the fall and into the spring. Uh, do you think this time he's more serious or will once again Antonio Brown uh, flare up at some point during a training I'm, I don't have a 12-year degree in psychology. I have no earthly idea. that Antonio Brown is a Fruit Loop. I mean, seriously. I, I – I, and I don't even mean – I just – I don't – he blows like the wind. I, I have no idea. He's an interesting I, guy. I think that if right now the Seattle Seahawks call and said, hey, Antonio, uh, two years, $18 million, he'd unretire pretty quick. So, I Antonio Brown seems to have a way of retiring when he feels like there's no option for him, and then he has a way of wanting to play again when rumors start that teams might have interest. So, I think more than anything, this uh, is probably in response to – while the rumors are that the Seahawks might be interested, I think Antonio's gotten the word that indeed they're not, and he won't be joining the Seahawks. So we'll see from there. I, I have news on a high school uh, oh, receiver. Lay it on us. Look, we know how good Trinity Christian has been, buddy. They have put a bunch of, you know, big time uh, recruits into college football. Not a ton have gone the uh, Gainesville way through the years. They had a chance yesterday. Um, with 2021 wide receiver Marcus Burke. He is the number 223rd ranked player in the entire uh, country um, in the recruiting cycle and uh, has gone ahead and made his decision known. He did it yesterday afternoon. It was down to a finalist of Florida, Georgia, and Penn State, and the 6'3", 180-pounder. Is headed to Gainesville. Um, Burke saying, I like the coaches. I like the atmosphere. I went to games on my other visits. The atmosphere is just crazy. I love it. It's just like home to me. 
uh, how much it reminds me of Trinity. The fan base is super loyal, uh, like Florida, and I love that. Burke last year uh, caught almost 40 balls, uh, over 800 yards, and uh, nine touchdowns as a high school junior, and, you know, is believed to be, you know, one of the top 20 or 30 uh, receivers in all of high school football. So there's a get for the Gators out of Trinity Christian. Uh, for all you Googans that were uh, patiently waiting for the end of the 10-minute drill, thinking maybe the poll would go your way and you would get a prize pack, got some bad news. Hit it. With a 63-37 to 37 come from behind oh, win. Okay. Whether or not lives, Jeff. Well, all right. To I'll, ride another day. I'll tell you what we'll do. We, I, I, have Ira, I have Ira Chauffel coming up next. Um, Ira from War Chant going to give us the FSU perspective on uh, where things stand over there in Seminole land. And then after uh, either Ira uh, and I will talk for the entire segment or we'll bring you whether or not at the bottom of the segment or um, at the latest uh, by 830 this morning. Uh, the people have spoken and I'm a man of the people. You did it, America. This is The Drill. It's a Catlin Truck Accessories Tuesday.